Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and today I'm going to welcome you to what I think might be a new series on the channel, The Horror Cow Files. And today we're going to be talking about a young man named Randy Stare. He was a man with a few obsessions and a creative side to him. So, let's get into it. Christmas tree is up. Happy early Christmas to you guys if you celebrate Christmas. Happy Merry Christmas. Uh, so, this is a video that's going to be kind of weird for some people because something very strange happened to me last week. It was exactly a week ago that this happened, and if you've been following me on Twitter or Facebook, then you know what it is. This is Randy Stair, born September 17th, 1992 in Pennsylvania. Randy, for a couple years, would try to be a successful YouTuber. He had many names for his channels over the years such as Pioneer Productions, or his most recent channel name, Andrew Blaze. Now, starting out, his YouTube videos were kind of in line with Fred. If you remember Fred, that probably dates you pretty hard. While as Pioneer Productions, he actually had a series going on, which involved him and two imaginary friends. One of them would hit on him constantly. But that all changed the moment he found her. Amber McLean was a rock star ghost from the show Danny Phantom, and when Randy laid his eyes on her, he grew obsessed, to the point where he had his own fan animation about her, called Amber's Ghost Squad. Now, we're going to watch a clip from what I think is one of the originals, but some of his fans throughout the years have done their own, so I guess we'll see. You stupid human! You're always getting in my way! Was that really necessary, Celesta? Is your existence really necessary? Uh, I, I, I don't... Sydney, do you even know what your purpose is in this squad? To live in peace and harmony for all eternity? You are, without a doubt, the dumbest soul to have ever been forced out of a birth canal! Come on, Celesta, I try. I'm just a slow learner, that's all. Our purpose is to manipulate the human race and terminate this putrid planet, not stand around with our thumbs up our asses and act like we belong here! Aw, oh, someone needs a huggy-wuggy. Sydney, stop. Come on, arms out! I swear to God, it's Sydney. Sometimes I want to crack open your skull and force you to drink the fluid draining from your head. You're just never in a good mood, are you? What's wrong, baby? Randy's obsession with Amber would grow and grow until he saw her as a god. Believe in a goddess, which is Amber. But I'm getting ahead of myself. You see, Randy needed to end his original project with his two imaginary friends. So, he did so by stabbing them both in the throat, putting them in a shoebox, and then taking them into the woods and burning it. Now, these imaginary friends are just... They're just figments of his imagination. They're characters in a show he was doing. But this should still have raised a couple red flags for some people. Now, I'm going to get into a little bit more of what Randy himself believed. You see, Randy believed that he wasn't trans. He was a ghost girl. Like, legitimately believed he had a female spirit in his body that came from a different dimension, the same dimension as Danny Phantom. And falling into these delusions further and further, he fell in love with another one of the ghost girls from his own fan animation. 
In other words, he believed he had a relationship with a character he created. Very similar to Chris Chan in that regard. However, the difference was, is he believed the only way to get into his ghost girl body was to die. And there you go. That's Randy Stare. Believes he's a ghost girl. Makes a weird, cringy fan animation. Possibly mentally ill. So there you go. Randy Stare. What's that? Why is he a horror cow? Well, I mean, Chris and Cyrax are horror cows. So you really shouldn't expect too much, right? Horror cows. A person of interest who's primarily known for their creepy and or disgusting behavior. Typical horror cow traits include, but are not limited to, pedophilia, zoophilia, cockrophilia, and exceptionally violent or excessive attention-seeking displays. At workplace massacre, an employee methodically securing the supermarket where he was employed before murdering three co-workers and then himself. Tonight, investigators are finding disturbing clues in what he posted online. Here's ABC's Eva Pilgrim. Tonight, police following a disturbing trail of online clues to find out why Randy Starr trapped and killed three of his co-workers at this grocery store. Randy's obsessions didn't stop at Ember. He also had an obsession with the Columbine shooters. He made shirts that were the same as the shooters. He bought two shotguns and taped them the same way the shooters had taped them, all of which culminated into him shooting up his place of work. Usually people have to ask themselves, how did we miss this? This was so sudden, so out of the ordinary for him. Well, with Randy, this was just par for the course. You see, ever since he was a kid, he had an obsession with death. I must have wrote like four or five stories where the character got killed at the end. And I actually turned these in as assignments and I never got like any like weird looks from the teacher or anything. She was a nice teacher and everything. Really great. Yeah, the teacher never like felt concerned or anything. I, I just remember not getting any feedback in terms of that. So I don't know what she was thinking, but and high school, I was that typical jaded teenager, you know. Just don't want to be here. Don't want to do anything. I'm bored with my life. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. You know, the typical teenage drama you deal with. And Tom Lynch, he was in my brother's grade. He was just, he was a grade below me, but I've had a class with him before and whatnot. So I knew him and he died on his way to school in the morning, crashed into a tree, smashed into a tree, dead on arrival at the hospital. And that was the first time I got messed up. That messed me. When I'm not thinking about YouTube or my family or what I love, I'm always thinking about what happens after you die. I want to do everything I possibly can in life before I'm dead. And that's just a scary thought. It's like everything has to end sometime. I'll be dead one day. You'll be dead one day. It's, it's not good to think about stuff like that. I know this is scary stuff, but it is just weird. And I think about it too much. Before his plan, Randy would make a bunch of video journals talking over his plans, his thoughts, and how he was feeling. This would go on for months. He had every opportunity to change his mind and to change his course, but he chose not to. Randy would convince his mother to come with him to a gun shop where he would purchase a Mossberg 500, the same as the Columbine shooters. That just happened. That just f***ing happened. Oh my goddess. Oh my goddess. I am f armed. I am f armed. I got it. I f got it. Two Mossberg 500 shotguns. My boss has been trying to get on day shift or second shift. He had an opportunity to get it, but the way things are looking, he's not going to get it. So then also put me like on the clock here because it's like he's been trying to look for other places to work. The way I see it, I can just barely have enough time to do all this within four weeks. I'll be like, why do you need that? And that's when it starts to get into like personal stuff. Like, why do you need two shotguns? You're scaring me. Please don't start buying more guns. You know, I have all the pieces. I'm just waiting on getting some eyeliner. So far, it's been okay. I've gotten the occasion of like, why are you obsessed with this Columbine? But other than that, virtually nothing. I don't think people would actually like, think I would actually consider doing something. He would practice with these shotguns for several weeks, preparing himself for the night of the shooting. And yet no one noticed. 
No one noticed that he was wearing these Columbine t-shirts. No one noticed that he was buying all these shotguns. No one noticed a thing, not his parents or his subscribers. But Eric Harris had a white t-shirt, black text, natural selection. I bought three of them, yet none of you knew what it meant, which blew my mind. I didn't want to tell you that, so I kept that under wraps. That's a warning sign. Looking back now, you might realize, geez, I, I don't know how I missed it. You might just start having flashbacks in your head of certain things, like certain situations where it's like, wow, that was one of them, or that was a warning sign right there. Or, Brutal, morbid, grim stuff into my videos, and people ate it up, and they loved it. They didn't realize that I actually meant it all. I started posting on all my social media how I really felt. Ember was always there in this dark place, like I mentioned. She fueled me to do this. I was like, she told me to do this. Do it for the Ghost Squad. You know, we need more souls. Randy would message himself back and forth on Twitter using alt accounts that were named after characters in his animations. These tweets would have a lot of violent undertones to them, but yet no one saw this as a red flag. No one said anything, and much like the juvenile person that he was, he left it up to chance. Okay, so here's the deal. Got a 1983 quarter right here. You believe in fate? Here's the fate test. I'm gonna flip this three times, or the best out of three, rather, and if it's heads, I'll do it here. If it's tails, supermarket. Best of three. Here we go. Touch it. You will see it as I see it. If I can find it. There it is. That's the tails. See that? Heads. <laughs> Had to be, huh? Have to have it come down to the very last coin flip. I can't believe I'm having this come down to a coin flip. The flip of a coin. Here it goes. One, two, three. Tails. That is a tails, folks. Tails. Which means there's gonna be a loss of a human life besides my own. Possibly more than one. That's fate for you. Ready to die. Ready to go. Six more nights, it'll all be over. You hear that? That's how quiet it's gonna be in my house for a week. I wanna know how everyone's gonna take this. How much they're gonna cry. How long are they gonna cry for? Randy sort of touched on it now, but there's another part of Randy's personality that's, let's just say, less than favorable. I decided to broadcast it live on Facebook. I know something's gonna end the stream. It's gonna get cut short, I get reported, flagged, whatever. Happened, man. This is surreal right now, but I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think this is gonna be my last video. I don't know what will happen to my channels after this. I don't know what people are gonna think of me after this. It doesn't bother me, but just looking at everyone at the supermarket, the manager's coming in, ah, da, 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 just messing around and talking about this and four more nights your whole lives are gonna be turned upside down because of me. I'm gonna f your life up. I can't wait. I want that supermarket to be closed for like a f month or go out of business. It's a crime scene. <laughs> it's gonna be a crime scene. And then it'll be over and everything will just be thrown away. Whoever would have thought that a cartoon character would cause this to happen. A cartoon character. How can a cartoon character bring all this out in you? How is that even possible? After the recording in his car, Randy would then take a video recording of the inside of the store. As you can see, something just feels off about this footage. It should just be a recording of a grocery store, but knowing what happens here, it's kind of hard to just see it that way. On the night of June 8th, during the night shift, Randy would begin to wander the store while his co-workers were closing up. 
His co-workers were doing their jobs, restocking the aisles, and not paying attention to him. He would block all the exits with pallets and lock all the doors. He would then go back to pretending to do his job for a few minutes. After pretending, he would go to the front of the store with a duffel bag that had his shotguns in it and begin his massacre. Victoria Brong and Kristen Newell were restocking an aisle together when Kristen had walked away to go restock a different area in the aisle. Kristen, wearing headphones, heard a couple popping sounds but didn't pay much attention to them. Unfortunately, the popping sounds that Kristen heard was Randy shooting Victoria with his shotgun. He shot her multiple times, and this is where the news reports differ. You see, Kristen says that she turned after she heard the popping sounds and saw Randy standing there over Victoria. Randy and Kristen would lock eyes before Randy just walked away to his other co-workers. The other version of this story is from the news, which reported that the CCTV caught Randy shooting Victoria and Kristen not hearing a thing because of her headphones. Randy would then walk up behind Kristen and stare at her for five seconds before walking off. It's unclear why Randy let Kristen go, but a lot of people, including myself, believe since it was so up close, he couldn't bear to look her in the eye and shoot her as he was probably trying to distance himself from his crime. Kristen would go on to be the only survivor of this shooting. Randy would then walk a few aisles over to where Brian Hayes was. Brian was a Navy vet and the nighttime supervisor, and Randy shot him in the back multiple times. After killing Brian, Randy would then hunt down the oldest member of the store, Terry Lee Sterling. And after killing him as well, Randy would go on to start shooting products on the shelf, during which time either Kristen broke from her trance or finally noticed Victoria, at which point she ran up to her body to check to see if she was still alive. Upon realizing that she was dead, Kristen would then flee from the store. Shortly after Kristen would leave the store, Randy would then march calmly down to the butcher's department where he would then take his own life. It's important to note that this entire thing was 100% preventable. Randy was clearly mentally ill and he needed help, but no one noticed. No one noticed he needed this help. If anyone gave what Randy was saying a second glance, they would have immediately saw something was wrong. Now, I'm sure I don't have to tell you guys this, but if you're feeling down, do not do anything like this. Randy was mentally ill. Randy didn't get any help, but that's no excuse for what he did. At the end of the day, he was a narcissist. He cared more about the posters in his room than he did about the people around him. The thing I honestly hope that you guys do, give these posters to fans. You know, this room was something special. You know, the posters completely border the room. It looks amazing in here. Nobody's room looks quite like mine does, if you really think about it. It's very unique. I mean, you'll have my phone and all that. You could just post on my social media. <laughs> Would anyone want these, you know? And I autographed the back of them. I autographed the back of all of them. So, you know, they're worth something. I mentioned earlier about Randy's less than favorable character flaw, and that is his narcissism. As you just saw with the posters and earlier when he was talking about fucking up other people's lives, Randy was the sort of person who didn't care what happened to other people so long as he got what he wanted out of it. And while it was tragic that he had an untreated mental illness, the only victims here are Terry, Brian, and Victoria. Those people whose lives were cut short by a sad man with a small presence. And if I can ask something of you guys, it would be this. After you watch this video, don't think of Randy anymore. Don't let him cross your mind. He was so fixated on getting famous from this that right before he started his massacre, he uploaded his video journal onto Twitter. He wanted the fame. He wanted the national headlines. And we can only do service to the victims by forgetting him and remembering them.
And that's Randy Stare. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you guys would like to see more Horror Cow files. I'm happy I managed to finish this up right before Halloween. So I hope you guys are having a happy Halloween. November 1st is my birthday. We're going to be doing a birthday stream. I have a couple videos that we're going to watch together. And then maybe we'll finish it up with an RPG. Where we'll try to make a character that looks as close to Cyrax as possible. And then just go goblin mode. I also have a Patreon now. Where you guys will get the videos early. And you should be getting one Patreon exclusive video a month. But I might need a little bit of time to get that ready. You guys don't really need to worry about the Patreon all that much. Most of my videos are still going to end up on here. So I wouldn't really worry about that. I want to thank the 820 subscribers at the time of recording. You guys rock. I want to thank the YouTuber Explore with us. I couldn't find any of these Randy videos online with just the video. So his video provided many of the clips in this one. So thank you again. Without you, this video wouldn't have been possible. I want to thank you all for watching again, and see ya.